I'm Debbie from the Sterling Heights Library, back again. Um, today I'm going to be talking about some books that I'm recommending to read, um, probably during this time where you've been home uh, looking for something to do. You may have been reading. Uh, you might need some new ideas for something to read that you haven't tried before. Um, so I went through my list. I keep track of everything I read and I use Goodreads, uh, the app on my phone. And I went through all of them and I, I looked for like my favorite books that I've read in the last, you know, six, seven years or so. Um, so uh, these were all fiction that I came up with today. And I also uh, I included only ones that you could find on an e-book uh, platform so that you can read them from home even if you can't get to the library or a bookstore to find a print copy of the book. Um, so all of these are available on Libby to read. Um, they may also be available as audiobooks. Um, I haven't checked all of them but you know it's likely that many of them would also be an audiobook if that's what you prefer. Um, the categories that I like to read are usually considered literary fiction. Um, they're sometimes on the, they're often on the bestseller list too, but they're, uh, I don't know. I, I think they're quality writing. I like them, uh, that they're, they have a little more thought into them than, than some books. Uh, so anyway, um, what, I picked, my first one that I picked is The Orchardist. And this is by Amanda Com Coplin. And uh, it was written in 2012. Um, this is a story about this uh, man named William Talmadge. He was a solitary orchardist. He, you know, had a farm where he grew fruit trees um, in the Pacific Northwest. And he takes in two pregnant teenagers uh, with dramatic consequences. Um, I really liked it. It was a beautiful writing. I liked learning about growing the, the, the fruit. I thought that was fascinating. Um, you know, it was, it was just a beautiful book. And it's one of my favorite books ever. And when I looked up the author, I found that this was the only book she's ever published which was surprising to me. I don't know what's happened to her after 2012, but this is it. And this is one of my favorite books I've ever read. <laughs> so that's that one. Uh, the second book I'm going to talk about is the Museum of Extraordinary Things by Alice Hoffman. Um, Alice Hoffman is one of my favorite authors too. I've read quite a few of hers. Um, a lot of the books that Alice Hoffman writes are have kind of a, a magical, mystical kind of theme, um, and many of them are historical. Uh, the Museum of Extraordinary Things was written in 2014. Um, it's about a, a teen girl named Cora Lee who lives at her father's museum of freaks, as that's what they call them then. <laughs> um, on, uh, on Coney Island in 1911. Uh, these freaks that are, were in her father's museum, as was the way they were at the time, some of them were natural things that they displayed, you know, living and dead. Some of them were created artificially to fool the public, like uh, combinations of mermaids and, and monkeys and things put together to fool people. That was a, a very big thing back then. So uh, this story follows her with her father at this museum. Um, there's some creepy characters in the in the story. Uh, I mean, her father is a creepy character. <laughs> there's other people, hangers on, that you know are involved in all this. But it's very interesting and detailed and well written. Um, it, it featured a lot of actual true disasters that happened around there during that time, like the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. Um, there was a, a uh, carnival, huge disaster fire also around that time that are included in the story. Um, the Alice, some of other the uh, other famous books of Alice Hoffman are the Dove Keepers. 
The Marriage of Opposites, which I read and I really liked also. And The Red Garden is one of my favorites too, but that one wasn't available on, um, on Libby. But those are some that you might want to look for if you like Alice Hoffman. Um, the third one I'm talking about is um, Beautiful Music by Michael Zadorian. Um, Michael Zadorian uh, wrote this in 2018, and he's a local author, he lives in Ferndale, and uh, he's written a number of really well done books. Um, many of them are set in the Detroit area. He grew, grew up in the Detroit area. Um, this particular one um, is about a kid named Danny, who is a chunky, nerdy teen um, in the early 1970s Detroit. Um, he grows up amid uh, racial tension and changing neighborhoods. Family tragedy and school drama show his salvation to be music. There's so much to relate to, I thought, in this book for those of us that grew up around here, especially during that time. Um, you know, it talks a lot about areas of Detroit, places, stores, um, reputations of neighborhoods, the music that was popular at that time, um, especially the local bands that you would have heard of. Um, I really like this book a lot and I recommend it to anybody who grew up in the Detroit area, especially in the, the 70s or anybody who likes music. Um, he has another book coming out in May called The Narcissism of Small Differences. Um, it's gotten pretty good reviews so far. I haven't seen it yet, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, he wrote another one called Second Hand, which is uh, another one that was set in the Detroit area about secondhand stores, which was kind of a, a unique American thing. Um, uh, that was very interesting, too. And then he wrote The Leisure Seeker, which was a uh, book that was made into a movie uh, with Donald Sutherland and Helen Murren. Um, so um, this is really, really good. You should uh, look into this. The fourth book I'm going to talk about is called The Miniaturist uh, by Jesse Burton. It was written in 2014. Um, this is about um, young Nella Ortman is married off to a wealthy Dutch trader in 17th century Amsterdam. Um, the story is about her struggles to find her place in her household, in her marriage, and in society. Um, she's guided and haunted by a mysterious craftsperson who is stocking her cabin at Dollhouse. Um, back in uh, that time, it was like a piece of furniture. It was like a, a, like a big dresser that the doors opened up, and that's where the rooms of the Dollhouse were. And she finds uh, things appear in there that she doesn't know where they come from, and it's all kind of mystical. And, um, I, there's a lot of tragedies in this book. It's, it's kind of dark. Um, life at that time probably wasn't really easy for most people. Um, but I really like the, the theme of with the miniatures. I love dollhouses and, you know, that was really fascinating to me. They had a lot of good detail on, on life at that, you know, household life at that time, you know, how, how a house, household was, was run. Um, and they made a movie of this also, which I've seen, and that was good too. Okay. The next one I'm talking about is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Um, this was written in 2014 also. Uh, this is about uh, the Lee family. Um, it's a Chinese-American, Chinese-Caucasian uh, mixed race family uh, whose oldest daughter is found drowned. And the story is about the family's struggles to deal with this tragedy, to figure out how she became uh, that way, drowned, and if it was a suicide or an accident or, or what happened to her. And then all about the uh, pressures of racial and gender expectations 
um, that were putting pressures on this, this girl. Um, and it's set in the 1970s uh, suburbia. Um, and it was, it was very good. Um, it was a quick read. Um, she's also, the same author has also written Little Fires Everywhere. Uh, that came out after this one here. And that's been very popular as well. I haven't read that one yet, but it's on my list. Next one is The Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. Um, there were quite a few different Orphan Train themed novels that came out near the same time. So if you, you know, if, if you hear about one called The Orphan Train that you're trying to find somewhere, you know, make sure you got the right author because there's a few of them. Um, and they all have the orphan train as, as a part of the story, but you know, they're different novels. Um, the orphan train were, uh, was back in the uh, 1800s, I think, um, where they took poor kids, sometimes orphans, sometimes not, sometimes they were just poor. Uh, from big cities like New York and put them on these trains and uh, sent them out west. And then they stopped at train stations out there by the farms in the Midwest and, and out farther west and offered the kids up to the farm families and whatnot that, that lived out there uh, to supposedly try to give them a better life. Um, many of these situations just ended up where they took these kids to work for them as, you know, just workers, and they had no intention of really making them part of their family. So there was a lot of, of tragedy in these, these stories. Um, this particular book uh, that talks about the orphan train is about this, uh, in the current day, there's this teen foster girl named Molly who gets, who gets into some trouble and gets assigned community service of cleaning out the attic of this elderly lady named Vivian. And she's reluctant, you know, not really excited about having to work with this old lady. And, you know, the old lady's a little hesitant too about this, this troubled teenager, but, they get talking and find that, you know, their lives have not really been that different, um, that the, the teenage girl has had a lot of problems and abuse and tragedy in her life. This elderly lady had been through some really tough things as well, and they found that they really had uh, a lot in common. Um, I really enjoyed that, just in pulling the generations together. I thought it was a quick read. I really liked it. And if you're interested in that orphan train idea, there are plenty of other novels that, that get into that too. Okay. The next book, the last book that I'm going to talk about is All the Light We Cannot See. Um, you may have heard of this. It's a pretty famous book, uh, very popular, won a Pulitzer Prize. Uh, it's going to be a Netflix uh, movie. Uh, it was written by Anthony Doerr in 2014. Uh, this is about a blind teenage girl in Paris, and she meets up with this radio prodigy German teenage boy. And so she's in Paris. The boy gets sucked into becoming a, a German soldier, and uh, they, uh, you know, it's about their their experiences living through the uh, French occupation in Paris. Uh, the, the things I liked about it were because this girl was blind, her family um, was very resourceful, and especially during the uh, difficult living conditions of the war and trying to help her with her life of being blind and how to navigate the world in that uh, condition. And then another thing I liked about it was the, the teenage German boy. It showed how, you know, how the people just got sucked into to being a soldier and how they really did, often didn't have a lot of choice and how these horrors happen in society, you know, where you think, how, how could people go along with this? But 
you know, when you read this story, you can kind of see how this can happen. It was, it was very moving. Um, the writing was really good. It was just kind of magical. Um, it's told in, in short chapters, uh, telling each of their stories separately, you know, each of the two um, young people's stories. Um, it was a real good page turner. It was a long book, but it was really worth the time that you'd invest in it. So this was a really favorite one of mine as well. So those are my recommendations for today. So maybe you can find some of these. You might have read some already or look for them on Libby. Uh, you know, you'll have a, a good time with them. I think they're, they're really worth it and I enjoyed them and I think you will too. So have uh, a good time and be safe. See you again.